everyone, Koopa Series here, and today I'm going to explain the story of my SCP mini series XK scenario we cannot redo up to episode 3, right? It's not going to be a full explanation of the story, just what we have so far. So, episode 1, uh, well, it's going to be an explanation of things off and on screen. So if you're if you're a fan of the series and you want to understand more about the, the story, tune in. If if you're not a big fan of the series, then this isn't the video for you because it's gonna be long. So it's like oh, I don't want uh, uh, I don't want to go anymore. It's too much video for me. So you know, go ahead and walk off. Thanks. Okay. Right. So episode one it was the begin it was the beginning of the end, right? So, there were a lot of SCPs that started to wake up, or they, they were simultaneously sprouting, sprouting off from the face of the earth, like, uh, uh, like, like if y'all know the SCP, the Primordial Worm, that's in the 2000 class, then... You'll know that there are a bunch of worms that live on the ground, right? Right somewhere beneath uh, New York, uh, or the area around New York, and they burst up from the depths once someone uh, takes their mother from them, I guess. So the cancer surgery they figured this out due to the plethora of sleeper agents that, that they have scattered across the world you know they got spies they've got secret agents they've got all these they got they got the roots and everything right they got the roots within the foundation at every single turn so just from one simple leak that oh hey by the way these worms they can an annihilate the, the whole nation if they all woke up so they decided to take the, the woman away from her habitat just causing the primordial worms to come out of the ground and start terrorizing the nation now the thing is it's been implied that there's a bunch of them, right? That they've all been breeding underground and that there's so many of them. And since so many years have passed since the, that initial encounter with them, uh, there's been a whole bunch of them, all full grown, growing all over the place. So one of them happened to be, uh, you know, racing against the whole nation and they come across SCP 2000, which is the Deus Ex Machina. Uh, if some of y'all don't know what that is, it's basically a giant machine that generates people and false memories and places. And the, and the case that an X case scenario happens, right? Like, that SCP is the reason why the foundation were able to regrow the population per se after an X case scenario. If you read the story, uh, a manuscript or a, a transcript recovered from the Mari Mariana's trench, then you'll know uh, that there used to be a world before this one, but it was buried or it was underwater. Hence, the the trench, right? In the story, you realize that the old world had an unexplainable chasm, just. Like everything to the west or to, to the the west, everything to the east or the west of the of the of the initial of the initial country, it's just gone. Like it's gone, just dis disappeared. Yeah, yes, it went. It's gone. And so that chasm became the trench when they decided to flood the entire world. And built this world upon the remains of the old. So, rather than the rather than the chaos insurgency wanting that rebirth to happen over and over again, they want the world to end just so they could see what happens afterwards. Is there a new life that emerges? Is there a new form of human species that emerges afterwards? Can we still survive in a world post XK end of the world? Maybe. Or at least to them, maybe. They they want to see that, but they can't. They can't allow the human species to fully evolve and grow stronger because of the endless rebirths that happen over and over and over again. So they decide to just end it all. They decide to drag one of these primordial worms to the Deus Ex Machina and then destroy it. 
but that the means to re to you know make the world reborn again uh, they cast insurgency they've succeeded in that regard not only that a bunch of a bunch of potential world ending SCPs begin to wake up just no mas there's just one SCP that's called um I forget the number right off the bat right it's right off about the top of my head but there's a there's a SCP that wakes up that's called the ship and the sailor it's within the 2000 it's within the 2000 range if you're going to look it up it's basically a uh, an ancient boat that's always tracking down a squid like entity and this squid like entity is one that digs up a a, a, a structure a structure made of iron in the middle of the ocean i think the Atl the atlantic I forget. It's somewhere in the oceans. Somewhere in one of the oceans. There's this giant iron structure that keeps down the rest of his species, right? A bunch of huge squid-like monsters that that are trapped beneath this giant. Just, they're trapped beneath this structure, and it's implied to be Tartarus. That giant hole that they're in, that's blocked off by the iron thing, is Tartarus, and what's beneath is something. You know, the, like the, the rest of his species, which are supposed to be huge monstrosities. And so within the, the story, again, it's off camera, but uh, these things are implied to have woken up and are now terrorizing the world. So while the SCP Foundation is trying to handle that, and the fact that their Deus Ex Machina is destroyed, the Chaos Insurgency omits all the... Well, chaos. They take the Bell of Entropy, which is their artifact. They take it upon the Russian Transline, which is supposed to be like one of the largest train systems, and that it goes across Russia, right? They sneak, or well, first they hijack the train, then they get the Bell onto the train, and as the train is going at full speeds, they decide to ring it at regular intervals. And so they cause a bunch of damage on the trans line because as you ring the bell of entropy, it causes damage around the bell. And not only that, it amplifies the effect by turning people who hear the bell into bells themselves. So it's so it's kind of like when you have the bell ringing at and the damage is t 10 meters, but somebody hears it. They become a bell themselves, which means that 10 meters expands further than that. You know, like there's more destruction. There's more destruction, the more people hear it. The more people that can hear it. And since the, the train the train's going off like who knows how many miles per hour, not only does it avoid the damage, sort of, but the people who are around the station where the bell was supposed to have stopped, they too destroy the station and everyone else around it. So... The news is trying to keep track of this mysterious of this mysterious mess of destruction that's occurring a, along the, the 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 Russian train line, and nobody knows what's going on. So there's that, and then uh, let me think. Oh, that's that's right. Uh, amidst all this, uh, the the SCP Foundation they found enough resources to put their most dangerous SCPs. And on a on a remote island in the middle of nowhere, right? This remote island is known as Psi Omega, which I'm sure some of you may have heard from the first the first episode. They send all of their most dangerous things into the middle of nowhere. In the case of uh, of a breach, then you know it's gonna take them a while to swim through the water and try and get back. So, uh, amongst the boat. Of D class that are supposed to be going to this Psy Omega is our main character, right? D1337. She's a girl who was uh, discharged from the army after a certain uh, incident where she punches her superior officer for for rebellion, right? And not only that, she also has a slight, just a slight stinge of uh, cannibalism. So there's that. Uh, Right now, she is the primary holder of SCP-11, which is the the skin worm, the the tattoo that's alive, and that while it grants you some sort of uh, superpower strength, like like superhuman strength, is at the cost 
of having to feel this thing move through your skin every day and it's like pins and needles just and obviously most people can't really get through that you know uh they find the they find the constant adrenaline rush great but the pain is what gets them out so they have to touch somebody else in order to spread it into the, the other person however 187 is not your ordinary individual of course right she's from the army she's been trained to withstand such pain in case she was ever tortured so with the with sp11 now coursing across her body she's she's already been used to the pain of the tattoo going across her body so she's uh she's always within the uh she's always within an adrenaline boost so uh let me think oh yes okay so that's that was episode one right the episode 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 one is when all of the like everything crazy that can ever happen happens episode two is when they start well episode two is when the chaos insurgency begins to close in on the foundation right the foundation has always been the, the foundation is being destroyed left to right and so is the world um in episode two i think you saw that uh there's a certain there's a there's a certain scp that lives in a glacier in greenland or iceland i think it's called the scp 722 jor jormanger J jormunger and this this is meant to be the the middle the midgar serpent the middle serpent i don't know it's a, it's a giant snake from norse mythology and when you at when you wake it up it's going to poison the world right it's going to throw all of its poison all over the place and so that's where they wake up up uh, uh prematurely right the chaos insurgency they had a sleep agent hiding amongst the guards who guard the entrance to said scp he kills them, then he puts down the like the, the certain levels of gas that it takes to keep this thing asleep. So it wakes up and it terrorizes the world as it sees fit. Not only that, they Oh, that's right. They rip SCP-44 right off its rails. And they also steal uh, SCP-516 Arc, which is support which is I think uh it was it's a deleted scp that's actually pretty cool now that you know now that i've read it enough times to know how it looked like how it works it's basically a mammalian version of scp 682 682 is reptilian this thing is mammalian right it's got it's got mammalian features forearms the cat head bare legs muscular fur whatever you shoot into it it just regrows the damage now it cannot it does not adapt like 682 but it's strong enough to take it on it's strong it's strong enough to take on a lot of the these other scps right it's that it's that tough not only that they also again they they, they steal 44 which is the 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 world war ii molecular fission cannon which as you know if you, if you plug it enough mass into it and then you shoot it it causes an explosion equal to that mass so you know when you load in a truck into it it has the potential of creating a nuclear explosion but you know but there's no fallout it's just it's just a force right I, I'm guessing I, I'm guessing and so they steal those and then um, it's implied but Again, it's a, it's uh, I've got to illustrate this on camera, but SCP-1337, no, D-1337, she survives an attack to the neck from SCP-173. Like her adrenaline rush rushes just in time to feel the the hands of 173 on her neck, and so it's it breaks for a bit, but she falls to the ground and she tells the command officers that she's fine. You know she, you know she has her hands up like that, has her has her eyes on the statue. So that's why she does not speak for the entirety of episode three, right? Uh, episode three is when everything goes down on side Omega, right? The SCP, I mean, yeah, the SCP Foundation is under attack at this last stand, you could say, 
And so when she wakes up, she has to scooty scooty on anime, you know. And amidst amidst all this, she gets recordings from uh, Dr. Torres, who is supposed to be uh, one of the pioneers behind a certain suit, a certain suit that that when worn, you can you can take on seventy six dash two with ease, and you can choke hold uh, SCP seven uh, fifty eight into submission by just using your punches. You just punch into submission because its main fuel source is not gasoline it's not green energy no 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 or sort of it's kinetic energy from SCP-18 the, the super ball the ball that, that can defy every law of physics that while most of us lose energy this thing gains energy as it moves so you know exponentially this thing has a capacity that when you bounce it on the wall it bursts the entire building just blah 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 blah, blah. And so this thing, uh, you put it on certain locations within the suit, and you can now kick with the power of of the second law of Newton, right? Like you can you can punch and kick stuff without worrying about a loss of energy. No, it's a gain of energy. With every punch, you're gaining energy through every punch. So if you're punching uh, fifty eight. With that, with that much force, you're gonna knock it out. I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter that that it that it survived uh, being under a tank. There, there, there'll be a point when you punch it so much that it's gonna feel like it's more than just being under a tank. It's gonna feel like I don't know, right? It's gonna, it's gonna feel, it's gonna feel horrible. Yeah, it's gonna be like a little dizzy when it wakes up. It's gonna have a horrible headache, even though it's a heart. So. Uh, he made the suits for that, as well as other advancements within the field that I guess were needed, like a replication of certain SCPs that can stop other SCPs, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, he's dead, right? He committed suicide because, you know, invasion. But he left behind a whole catalog of SCPs and a map for our D class to find and exploit on her way out, right? Like. Uh, every so often she'll see her her dossier on a certain creature that she sees and you'll be able to identify what it is instead of having to like have me tell you what it is because oof. um let's see let me see let me see let me see all right so at the end you, you you'll see that scp 1370 or pesterbot is not in his usual form he's in a more mecha form and uh, it's because he was given surgery by SCP-3, no, 870, which is the rocket surgeon. The rocket surgeon is able to operate upon uh, tools and machines as if they were like people. Like he's able to slice through their, uh, he's able to slice through wires and and peel apart metal plates as if they was as if it was flesh. And so by using certain kinds of tools, he was able to implant. 1370's head onto a mecha armor and then fuse that armor with multiple instances of uh, Robo Robo dude. I forget which SCP he is, but there's a bunch of Robo dudes trapped inside that suit, which allows uh, one three a uh, Pesterbot to control Robo dude through verbal commands alone. In other words, it's a giant pathetic robot controlling a bunch of potentially dangerous robots. So that's that explains why Pesterbot seems so powerful at the end of episode three. And then episode four, five, and six, you'll see him in action more and more. So. Um episode four will be when will be as they escape. So you'll see a, a couple of co cool SCPs as the as they as they escape. Episode 5 is what happens during episodes 3 and 4, which is the Keter class going up against the Keter class. Like, uh, if y'all remember uh, um, Pandora's Box, which is the group of SCPs that were supposed to have been weaponized, but it failed. They, they bring it back, but they add new SCPs into it. So it's a whole bunch of SCPs going up against 
the escaping killer class that are, are emerging, right? SCP-58, 76, 49, 682, like the classics, right? It's the classics. Like it's it's basically a battle royale in episode five, except it's not a five. Except it's not a battle royale. Like it's everybody against everybody. No, it's it's a certain group of really dangerous people against the dangerous people. And then in episode six, that's when you get the awakening. I'm not gonna say what that is, but I'm sure you guys can figure that out on your own. The awakening, and it's supposed to be completely world ending, right? You got, yeah, it's it's a bit too much to explain, but the awakening. Be sure to look for that in episode six. Okay, I think that's is that everything I covered? Is that everything covered? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Alright. Sorry, guys. I'm still recovering from this. Right. See ya.